If you're flying with Virgin Atlantic in premium economy, there's one really important thing to know. Some of their flights are operated by partner airline Delta, with a premium select cabin. The prices might be the same, but the onboard service is very different. In this review, I'm going to compare the Virgin and Delta premium economy products. I'll score each service based on a range of criteria to conclude which scores higher. I've flown with both airlines in the past couple of months. With Delta, I flew Premium Select from London to New York on a Boeing 767-400 aircraft. With Virgin Atlantic, I flew Premium Economy from New York to London on an Airbus A350-1000 aircraft. Delta Premium Select passengers check in at Sky Priority Desk, alongside Business Class passengers and those with loyalty programme status. There were long queues for the three open counters at Heathrow. I waited about 30 minutes to check in. With Virgin Atlantic at JFK, there were dedicated premium economy check-in desks, separate from business class. Here I only queued for a couple of minutes. So on check-in experience, Virgin has the upper hand. With Delta, at the gate you wait to be called forward to board. Boarding was by group, with business and those with loyalty programme status called forward first. Sadly that loyalty status didn't extend to Virgin Gold Cards, so I boarded with the rest of Premium Select. With Virgin you were also called forward to board. Although lines had formed for Premium Cabins, these were ignored by staff, with boarding becoming a free-for-all. Neither experience stands out as particularly good. The Delta cabin was small with only 20 seats in a 222 configuration. On other aircraft, the seat configuration is either 232 or 242 with more seats. The seat was 19 and a half inches wide with a pitch of 38 inches between each row, although the newer A350 aircraft has a narrower seat at 18 and a half inches wide. There was a decent space between seats and plenty of floor space. The Virgin cabin was larger with 56 seats in a 242 configuration. On other aircraft, the seat configuration is 232 with fewer seats. The seat was 18 and a half inches wide with a pitch of 38 inches between each row. The same measurements as the Delta A350 cabin. On other aircraft, the seat width is 21 inches. The space between seats was okay and there was plenty of floor space. The seats are pretty similar with newer, larger aircraft having a higher density. Don't forget to let me know what you think, like, subscribe and leave a comment. Both airlines have large entertainment screens. The systems feature a range of movies and box sets. The Delta system did stall at times, which was irritating, but they did offer good quality headphones. Wi-Fi was pretty pricey at $29 for the flight. Both systems had touchscreens and were easy to use. The headphones on Virgin weren't particularly good quality. And Wi-Fi was even heftier at £30 for the flight. On balance, both offerings had faults, including really expensive Wi-Fi offerings. On Delta, premium select passengers shared bathrooms with economy, so there was a bit of a walk to the washroom. It was pretty compact, but well maintained throughout the flight.
On Virgin, there were two dedicated premium economy bathrooms at the front of the cabin. Again, it was pretty compact, but also well maintained throughout the flight. Virgin scores the upper hand by having dedicated washrooms. The Delta food and drink offering was the same as economy. It wasn't anything special, with wooden cutlery and plastic cups. The first drinks were served alongside the meal. Juice and water were offered throughout the flight. The portions weren't particularly large and the quality wasn't that great. The Virgin food and drink offering was in stark contrast. You were handed a menu to start, followed by a drink service with glasses rather than plastic cups. The meal was better presented. The portion sizes were better too. Drinks and snacks were available in the galley throughout the flight. On a longer flight, a lolly was offered midway through the journey. An afternoon tea was served prior to landing. The Virgin food and drink offering was far better than that on Delta. On overall service, I was disappointed with Delta. Premium Select was just an extension of economy, with exactly the same service. It wasn't anything special, with the cabin crew treating you like an economy passenger. Virgin, on the other hand, had an enhanced service, with cabin crew coming through the cabin to check on people every so often. The cabin crew were more friendly. With Virgin there was more of an experience to the flight rather than the A to B approach of Delta. Adding up the scores for each of these criteria, Delta scores 58% compared to Virgin's 74. Having experienced both services, Virgin does stand out primarily because of the onboard service. I'd recommend taking the Virgin flight rather than the Delta code share. Comment below and let me know what you think of both services. Do you agree with my analysis?